Welcome to the DFO Rundown Podcast with Frank Saravalli and Jason Greger on dailyfaceoff.com. Delivered by DoorDash. Our guest today burst onto the NHL scene in 2014-15, scoring 40 points in 65 games as a rookie defenseman. And in his eight seasons, he has the eighth most points among D-men with 374 and 572 games. He's the pride of Gothenburg, Sweden, and the newest member of the Anaheim Ducks. John Klingberg, welcome to the DFO Rundown. How are you doing? Great, guys. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Uh, we appreciate you doing this, John. It's uh, We're into August now. and um, How stressful has the last few weeks been for you? You were one of the, the big-name free agents, and uh, you had to wait maybe a little bit longer. Can you take us through the last few weeks and how it was for you? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's dating back to almost a year, obviously. Uh, I've had a great time here in Dallas. This is where we... We started off and we got our daughter here and, and built a family here. So um, it, it's looking back at the year, we knew maybe uh, it was going to come down to to go in at free agency and uh, and take it from there. So obviously it's it's been it's a little bit different year than what we've been used to, but uh, we gained a lot of experience from it. And, and obviously we're we're very happy and and looking forward to come down to California and play for Anaheim. I guess to add to the whole experience, John, you changed your agent uh, throughout the process. Can you can you talk about that? Was that was there frustration, disappointment? What went on there? Uh, me and Peter, uh, we had a great relationship for for twelve years, and uh, he's been one of the the closest to me. Uh, but at the end of the day, I made this decision on a personal level, uh, an individual. Uh, what I thought was was best at the moment, and for me and my family. Uh, so it was just a business decision on my end. John, looking back at the last couple of weeks, I'm sure there were a number of teams that were in the mix that were willing to offer you a one-year deal. Why did you ultimately decide to go with Anaheim? What was it about them that drew you to the Ducks? Yeah, the more into free agency, obviously, uh, we understood it's going to be a shorter term contract and then we kind of narrowed it down to a few teams and, um, where I saw myself having a good year um, on a personal level, but having success with a team uh, that I wanted to stay with and, and try to make the playoffs and have a good run there too. Uh, I saw Anaheim as the best fit. Uh, obviously for myself playing in the Western Conference, uh, all these eight years uh, staying in the Western and, and playing in Pacific, I think that was a huge plus for me as well. And uh, if you look at Anaheim's roster, I think they have really – really interesting and talented young players that had a good year uh, last year. And I think uh, try to build on that. And uh, with the signings they did with Petrano and, and Ryan Strom as well, uh, they helped the decision as well, obviously. And if, if you look at their their core too, with Adam Henrique, Silverberg, Cam Fowler and, and Shattenkirk, and obviously John Gibson, I think, I think the team is, is, is really good. Uh, I think they had a tough year with, uh, some injuries and, and COVID and all that. But uh, just looking at the team, uh, the Pacific, I think, is wide open. Uh, I think there could be a, it could be a fun year and we can have a lot of success there. What is your mindset heading into a one-year deal? Obviously, you know, I think a lot of players would prefer the security, of course, getting a long-term deal if you can get it. But it doesn't matter who you are in the NHL, John. You always need to continue to prove yourself year after year. Do you look at this, you know, one year, you know, opportunity as as sort of freeing in the sense that you get to try something new? Do you look at it in terms of the pressure that comes with, you know, trying to get that next contract? How do you think you'll handle that mentally? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, we went into free agency looking for a long term um, where we where we saw. I could come in and, and have success, but obviously, obviously with the family situation as well, but uh it's it's a little bit different now with with COVID uh, and 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 the cap is it's not moving so it, it's a little bit different so obviously uh, narrow it down to a few teams I understood I have to get a one year and as a player you're always trying to prove yourself um, it's not going to change anything from my perspective um, I always had to prove myself for a lot of years during my career. Uh, even from dating back to juniors and all that too. So, but obviously, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, I need to have a good year. 
and I think if the, if the team is successful, uh, I'm going to be successful on a personal level as well. So that's kind of how you treat it as well. And I had great talks with, with Pat as well, uh, yeah, leading up to this signing as well. And uh, if the team is happy with, with me and I'm happy with the team, uh, who knows what's going to happen. And that's kind of that's where we're at. John, can you do the Michigan? Do you have to do the Michigan to fit into Anaheim? Uh, I'm probably going to let Trevor Seagrass do that. I'm not, I'm not going to be a lot of times behind the net, I feel like, but obviously as an offensive defenseman, I'm going to try to, uh, try to be involved in the offense, but I don't see myself do a lot of the Michigan snow. What about defending it as a defender? Um, with the young guys, they're trying a lot of new things. Do you have to be more aware of it? Or do you think there's only a select group of guys that are even got the guts to try it in a game? Uh, I think it's a little bit different. Uh, obviously, when I came in as a rookie as well, everyone was saying the game is changing. But on the other side now, when I'm 30 uh, and I'm the kind of veteran, I, I I see that the game is changing too. But I think it's to the good to the good part. I mean, it's uh, it's all for uh, hockey. It's all for show. Obviously, it's it's uh, supposed to be fun. And I think when you score sickles like that or make plays, it's, it gets the crowd into it. And I think you're building the game. So I think it's great that you see a lot of young guys coming in and uh, not just watching and learn. Obviously they do that as well, but coming in and try to be themselves and, uh, and be as good as they can from the very start. If you compare Gothenburg, Sweden, where you grew up in Sweden to now living in Dallas and now in Anaheim, I'm guessing it's a little bit warmer in both of those, um, those situations how how different how did how did you make the transition uh, looking back to 2014 15 john how how challenging was it coming over from sweden uh it was challenging uh but at the same time i was i was in finland for a bit i moved to northern sweden so i wasn't living in my hometown the entire time even if i came back for one year before i moved over to to texas and the nhl so uh i kind of been around kind of been around a little bit but uh obviously coming over coming over to the u.s it's it's totally different from living in sweden but at the same time you uh you get used to it and u.s have had a lot of good things and we we uh we love living here obviously we we got our daughter who's born here in dallas as well so we got a little u.s u.s uh, citizen running around in the family now as well that's pretty awesome, John. The connections you made in Dallas, you could tell were real uh, with your teammates who became close friends, uh, saw some videos and pictures from your wedding in the, over the last few weeks. Uh, it looked like one of the more fun weddings I've ever seen. Just what was it like having all your teammates uh, from Dallas uh, come over for the wedding? No, it was great. It was a lot of fun, obviously. And Sweden showed itself on the best side. We had great weather, which is not usually the part uh, with Sweden that you know you're going to have. So it, it was great. We had great weather. Uh, we had a lot of friends coming from different parts in Sweden. Obviously, I had my, my old teammates come in there as well. Uh, it was great. It was a really good three couple of days. So uh, it was great. Was it also maybe a little bit of a reminder of how tough it was to leave the Stars, you know, knowing that you had so many connections there and close friends? Yeah. Uh, it is. At the same time, uh, I feel like those friendships is going to last uh, for a lifetime as well. It's not going to be the be the same, obviously, seeing them every day. But um, we've been good in staying in touch throughout the years, even in the summers as well. So uh, I'll cherish my time in, in Dallas for the last eight years a lot. Um, obviously, this is where I came over as a as a rookie, even if I played some senior games back home in Sweden coming over here and uh, start your career for real and uh, obviously uh, building a building a family here as well. So uh, Texas and Dallas has been great for us. Uh, we we'll cherish our time here, but very excited to to start a new chapter as well. John, as a as a as a young father with with a young family, I noticed you have a full no move clause until January 1st and then it's a, a 10 team uh, no trade clause in, in the second uh, half of the season basically. Um, when you were signing this one-year deal, do, do you weigh that possibility that if you guys aren't in the playoff hunt, that you know you're a pending UFA and you know Anaheim could probably get a lot for you? Do you balance that in? Is is that harder 
well, when you have a family that you might be uprooting middle of the season? No, I mean, I think that's just the side of the business that you have to understand. So uh, signing with Anaheim, it, it wasn't a big deal that we were going to get that because obviously uh, they're signing me to be there for a year now and, and help the team win. But uh, depending how, how things go, we want to be able to to see, see us around for different options, not just the team, but uh, me as well. And I think, I think it came down to that and it was a great fit for, for both parts where uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But obviously the main thing is coming down there and, and having a, a successful season as a team. And if the team is successful, I think uh, it's gonna, I'm going to be successful in the individual part as well. John, a lot of the time we kind of forget maybe the human element of it. Uh, you know, playing in, in your last year of a contract after a long-term contract, it's something you never really had to worry about. You just went out and played. Did it weigh on you at times during the year that you didn't have the contract extension? You're obviously very happy in Dallas. So how did those conversations go? You know, we'd heard about trade requests. Was, was it a mentally different year for you? And, and did it have any impact on how you played at times? Yeah, I think a uh... A few things that came out in media wasn't true, uh, okay. but that's that's a lot of things that you can't control and you just keep playing. But of course, I was frustrated at some times. I I think that I was in, in Dallas for, for eight years and uh, I helped the team to be successful there and I saw myself resigning there. Um, but it's a business and uh, I was looking maybe uh, for something that the team was looking for something else and and like I said, it's part of the business and, and you move on. And um, at times it was frustrating, but at the end of the day, I think I, I did what I could last year to, uh, to help the team win and, and put myself in a good situation, situation. But also at the same time, I feel like I could probably have done some, something differently, but that's all in the past. Um, can't do anything about that now. And I'm just looking forward to, to the future here and having a good year down in Anaheim. Looking at, ahead to the Ducks, uh, they made a big change last year. Uh, for years, their power play had really struggled, John, and you're obviously a pretty good guy on the man advantage. They took a big step forward. When you're looking and signing at teams, are, are you looking at specific things like that, like how I would fit in on the system that they run on the man advantage in Anaheim, for instance? Yeah, uh, I think so. And that's kind of a, the things you narrow down when you you know you're going to probably sign a one-year deal or, or, or a short-term deal that, it has to be a great fit for, for that year to put yourself in a good situation moving forward, but also helping the team win. It's, it's, a, team, it's a team game, and uh, if the team is successful once again, I feel like I'm going to be successful as well. Uh, yeah, so you kind of look at those different situations. Obviously, I think me and Pat, when we had the discussions uh, before I signed, uh, I got a lot of answers on what my role was going to be and what they thought about me as a – as an individual player, but also the fit for me as uh, playing in Anaheim as a team. So that's kind of all the things you, you run down and weigh in pros and cons with different teams. And at the end of the day, I felt like Anaheim was a great fit for me for, for a year to start with a year and we'll see what happens uh, in the future. Did you rely on any Swedes as well? Obviously Hampus Lindholm spent a long time there. Uh, you have Jacob Silverberg there. Are you close with any of those guys? What was, did they help you in the process? Yeah, I met Silverberg a couple of times, uh, but I'm really close to both Raquel and Hampus Lindholm. So uh, obviously calling them and, and running some options and, and thoughts with those guys. Uh, too bad none of them are there now. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's great that you, you have those uh, relationships with guys around the league that you can call in and, and, and see and get their thoughts on it. You mentioned the idea of talking to Pat in terms of fit. And, you know, Jason was asking you about the system and what it might look like with you on the power play. How active do you think other guys that actually get to free agency are in that process? Like you seem to be really dialed in in terms of asking questions and, and getting answers. I don't get the sense that as many other players are. Why, you know, why do you think that is? And, and what was it like sort of being involved in the process? Yeah, no, I think it's important. I mean, like I said, we were coming in at free agency and looking for a longer term deal. And, and that also has to be a great fit. It, you have to understand that, okay, what do the team expect from you? And what do you expect from the team? Uh, and 
that's the questions I feel like you really have to ask to to be able to come there and be successful. So you know you're on the same uh, thoughts of uh, how you want the team and how they want me to play and narrow it down, knowing that it's going to be a one-year deal. It was even more important, I think, uh, on an individual level to know that I obviously put myself in a good position moving forward and maybe trying the market next year or re-signing in, in Anaheim or whatever is going to happen. Uh, it had to be a great fit and, and knowing what the team expect from me and knowing what the team expects of the team as well. So I think it's important that you, you obviously uh, make those calls and maybe running those conversations with the GM and the coaches to know that this is what we're expecting of our team. And if we add you, this is what we expect out of you. So, uh, it's just it's just a part of the business that I know and wants to have answers on. So I know that I can come in to a new team and be as uh, as successful I, as I can be. John, uh, on our show, we always like to end our interviews with a little bit of rapid fire, uh, some fun stuff. Uh, the only rule is you have to answer the question. Okay. All right. Okay. What is your favorite Swedish food? Meatballs. Okay. Now, if, if you're taking Frank and I out for dinner in Sweden, what restaurant are you taking us to and why? Uh, Toso. It's a restaurant in, in Gothenburg. I think it's a, uh, it's a great restaurant in, in downtown Gothenburg, and it has some, some great vibe and good sushi. Good. Okay, sushi. All right. I like that. Now, I was looking up, are you a metal fan? Because metal music is huge in Sweden. Uh, I'm not the biggest metal fan. Uh, I'm kind of listening to all different kind of music, but uh, it's not my first choice. Now, because I, I actually Googled up the top 10 Swedish bands, and most of them were metal, and I like Opeth and Meshuga and Bathory and stuff like that. Um, is like, have you been to a metal concert in Sweden? I've heard that it's quite the uh, quite the event. Uh, I haven't. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, are you an ABBA guy? uh yeah i think when you you go into the dance floor and, and feel some some dance moves abba is a great choice okay um which one of your former teammates would have fit in best as a swede uh ben bishop why uh just very social and outgoing guy uh, i know you guys probably doesn't think that of swedes that's probably just because they're uh, a little shy of talking English. But other than that, I feel like a lot of Swedes are very outgoing. Um, actually, honestly, most of the Swede guys, they all come across as like genuinely beauty guys, like super outgoing. Um, what was your favorite hobby as a kid? <sighs> I was always into hockey, all different sports, but hockey was my number one. And that's kind of all I wanted to do. Now, if Carl Ole and John Klingberg who is the best footballer? That would be me. <laughs> is there anything that your brothers are better at than you? Uh, yeah, my brothers are probably better at me than lift, uh, at lifting weights. I'm not the biggest <laughs> and strongest guy, so they're probably a little bit stronger than me. Okay, so uh, they spend a little bit. So what is your least favorite workout in the gym? Everything upper body. <laughs> Really? So, so if John Kling were like, if, so bench press is not your forte? No. Uh, you skate with your legs. So I prefer doing leg work. Okay. I like that. Uh, are you a reader? Uh, not really, no. No? Favorite movie? I like The uh, Lord of the Rings. Oof, I like that. And now that you're going to Anaheim, have you been to Disney? Uh, have you been to, well, to, to Disneyland? I've been once. Uh, I actually went there with Raquel uh, once. So uh, been there once. It's probably going to be a lot of times now with one daughter and another way, another one coming as well. Oh wow, second one! I love it. Now, what what was your go to ride? Like, are you a roller coaster guy? Do you go on like Do you like the the scary, twisty rides, or are you more of a passive rider? Uh, growing up as a kid, uh, obviously roller coaster was a lot of fun, but. Uh, Nowadays, I feel a little bit dizzy doing it, so 
I'm probably more of a passive writer now. Okay. Awesome, John. Thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your honesty and uh, best of luck in Anaheim. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you, John.